Hey everybody, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Back at the beginning of the summer, I showed you my antenna that had come down in a storm. This is the cable from it, the steel cable that held the wire up. And here's the coax, still hanging in the tree here. It's been a busy summer and I haven't gotten around to putting that back together yet. And as you can probably see around me, there's a lot of leaves on the ground, and if you look down in the woods back there, you can see there's pretty much no leaves left on the trees. So it's late fall here. I don't have a lot of time left to work on antennas. It's going to be some work to get this off center fed back up, because I've got to get cables back up into three different trees in order to put that up. And I really need to put the antenna back together again, redo the ballon, redo all the connections on it, and get it tuned up a little bit before I put that back up. So I'm going to try something a little bit different, hopefully easier to put up, and I don't know how well it's going to perform. So come on, take a look. One of the things that I have never put up is a long, long wire antenna, an end-fed long wire antenna. So what I'm hoping to do is to get a cable or a paracord up in the top of one of those trees way back at the corner of my property. I think that's close to 200 yards. I've never measured it. So I'm gonna pace it off and we'll see how long it is. And then we'll see what we can do to get an antenna up there. Well, I'm not sure if you can still see me, and I'm not sure if this wireless mic is going to work this far, but this is pretty close to 150 paces down to the tree down here. If I take extra big steps, which is what I did on this walk, my pace is about three feet, so this is 150 paces or 450 feet. That'll be a pretty long wire, and we'll have to see how it performs. If we're going to put up 450 feet of wire, what can I use? I'm going to use aluminum electric fence wire. And if you notice, this spool is 1,320 feet. Well, it's not quite 1,320 feet. I've used some of it. But you can get this for, I think it's $59 that I paid for this at my local tractor supply store. And if you have any sort of a farm store. There's a number of different farm type stores around the country. And I think you can order this on Amazon. I'll try to have links for all of this stuff in the description. This is 1,320 feet or a quarter of a mile of wire for $59. And aluminum is not quite as conductive as copper, but it's pretty close. And it's also a little bit lighter. So this will be our antenna. It's been a couple of days since I showed you pacing off the antenna over to the tree over there. And I have since ended up putting a paracord up in a tree here that's, oh, probably 50 or 60 feet further to the west. I was just having way too much trouble getting the cord up in that tree. I used my air-powered antenna launcher, which I showed in another video when I was doing my off-center fed updates. And there's a link to that video in the description if you're interested in that. But now we're going to connect our aluminum electric fence wire up to this and get ready to start pulling it up. All right, I've got my aluminum fence wire tied off to one side of my insulator. And then I've got my paracord tied off to the other side. So it's time to pick up the spool and start pulling the wire up to the house to get ready to raise it up. I'm going to pull some of this paracord back and tie it off down here to get that a little closer to the tree. I've got the spool up at the top so that it can 
pay out a little bit more where it's stuck in the ground as I pull this back. And my intent is to get this within five or six feet of the tree. I wish it would kind of unhook and go up to the higher limb where I have the paracord going over, but we'll see. We've just got some fencing back here and I'm gonna tie this off to the fencing. These T-posts are in quite a ways, so hopefully they will be strong enough. And we'll just have to see how strong my paracord is and how long that's going to last. Actually, at the moment, I'm having trouble just pulling up more cord. There we go. Yeah, I hope this is going to stay in the ground. There. Now I have a temporarily a temporary loop to hold it. I want to get my pulling rope off of it. This is all very much a first attempt just to see how this antenna is going to work. If this looks like this is going to be a fantastic antenna, then I will probably do a little bit more permanent installation down here. I got a lot of fence in both directions, so I don't think I'm going to pull that all up. All right, that's not going to go anywhere, at least for the time being. And we'll clean up our other rope and then we'll go work on the top side. Well, you might be able to tell from the sun one more day has gone by and we have the aluminum wire all the way up here and it's going up into the tree and then i have a ceramic insulator screwed into the side of the house again i'm not sure this is going to be permanent but that's what we've got for now and i have a paracord coming down with an insulator on it and then this is gonna get run into this MFJ tuner which I have temporarily screwed to the side of this deck because this deck is coming out this spring you might be able to tell it's not in the best of shape but it arrived with the house this is the MFJ 926 B I bought this tuner at a ham fest a couple of years ago and have never used it. It's an outdoor tuner. It tunes a pretty broad range of impedances and it also has a just a wire input. So that'll be perfect. Now, the one final question, I'm going to be taking this aluminum wire and putting it on this insulator and then I need to run it down to the tuner. I don't want to put a lot of stress on that obviously, but it's also aluminum wire and it's going to be outside in the elements. So how do we deal with that? Let's take a quick look at uh, some pieces that I bought to help with that. Here we are at the local Home Depot and I am looking at these splicer reducer connectors. This is just got a screw terminal on each side and the really important part here is it says aluminum and it says dual rated for use with aluminum and copper. So we need this. And then the other thing that we need is something called Noah Locks, which is a brand name. There's other brands and I only need a little tiny tube for what I'm doing, but this is an antioxidant compound for working with aluminum wire to keep it from oxidizing and corroding. All right, I've got a little table set up here. It's getting windy out, of course. That's when you want to set up antennas, when it's nice and windy out. And we've got our tube of antioxidant. I've taken one of the splicing blocks out of here. And I did also pick up a roll of Scotch uh, moisture sealing. This is waterproofing tape. This doesn't have adhesive on it. It sticks to itself. So you wrap this around joints that are going to be outside, and then you wrap electrical tape over the top of that. It's kind of like the tape version of coax seal. So let's get started. Well, of course the wind has kicked up out here. Hopefully you can still hear me okay. I'm going to, I will try to filter out some of the wind noise. I've got my wire here, and I am pulling it to try to guesstimate about how much slack I want here. And I'm going to cut a little bit extra, and of course I've got my insulator. So we're going to try cutting this right here. I 
and then you will have to pardon me while I go grab my insulator that I just dropped. So we are going to feed the wire through here. And give it a couple of good twists. I don't think that's going to come out. And I'm leaving a pretty good length of tail on this so that I can connect it to my little junction block. And of course one other thing that I forgot was a screwdriver. So I'll ask you to pardon me again for a minute. We're going to open up the splicing block here. I might as well open up both sides. And then I am going to put a generous dose of antioxidant grease in the hole. Probably should have brought out a paper towel so that I could wipe some of the excess up. The other thing I should have brought was a little pair of helping hands or a hobby vice to hold some of this. But the good news is this is not going to have any significant amount of stress on it because the stress is all going to be taken up by the insulator. Screw that down nice and tight and then I will be back one more time. I'm going to get our copper wire to put in this side. All right, we've just got stranded copper wire here, nothing special. Uh, I believe this is 16 gauge. So there's our stranded wire stripped. And actually, I'm going to just fold that over just so I've got a little bit more material for the screw to screw down on. And strictly speaking, I don't really need the NOAA locks for the copper, but you know what? It's not going to hurt to put a little bit on there as well. There we go. Now I just got to go get that block. I'll be right back. All right, so we are going to take our copper wire, put it in this side of the block, and get all of this goop that's all over my fingers. Don't worry, it didn't go away because I have the rope tied. All right, so there is our connection. Now I'm going to need to go get some paper towels because I want to wipe the excess off before I tape this up. All right, I've wiped the excess off of this, and this is the roll of that sealing tape. And it comes with a backer so that it doesn't stick to itself in the roll. So I'm just going to cut some off here. We are going to just wrap this around here. And again, there's not really adhesive per se on this, but it is extremely good at sticking to itself. And it makes a, I think we used to call this self amalgamating tape. I'm not really sure what amalgamating is, to tell you the truth, but it does it to itself. And I'm just going to make sure we've got a good seal. And honestly, with the antioxidant compound and that splicing block, 
probably could just leave this hanging out and it would be fine at least for at least for a year or two certainly for as long as this experiment is because we're going to see if this antenna works well then i may redo this in a more robust manner especially down at the other end and i'm just going to rip that and i'm going to put a little bit more up here so i can wrap it tightly around the aluminum wire now we're going to just wrap some electrical tape over the top of the whole mess mess might be the right word for this While I'm wrapping this, some of you may be asking, what about strain relief or stress relief for the wind? Because I just have this directly hanging in the tree down there, and I've just got it tied with a rope up here to this insulator that's on the side of the house. And there's all kinds of articles, including in the antenna handbook and other places that talk about using pulleys and springs and different kinds of things to relieve stress from wind. There goes a plane overhead, which hopefully is not interrupting my audio too much. And I think in this case, because this wire is so long, I'm counting on the fact that there's gonna be enough of a sag in the middle of the wire that the wire itself will be the strain relief. And then I am also, I'll put one more knot in here. And then I'm going to put a little bit of tape around this just to make sure that knot doesn't come out on me. And I've just left the other end of this copper wire on the spool for now because we'll pull it up and then see how much we need to make it to the tuner. And I think this is good to go. All right, well, I've got the rope here, or my paracord here, and I've got it tied up here, so here's the moment of truth. We're going to pull this up, and I'm frankly not quite sure how tight I want to pull this. I think that's probably, this is pretty tight, and this will stretch over time. We're just going to make a knot in here and do a double half hitch and leave the loop of cord for the time being. As I said, this is all a little bit of an experiment and temporary. Well, we've got our wire attached. We've also got a ground wire right here attached, and that's just about a 25-foot counterpoise wire that's just laying on the ground right now. We'll do something a little bit more permanent if this works out. And then of course I've got the coax going inside to the shack. And our wire that goes to the antenna is nicely strain relieved and just goes up to the insulator up there. All right, you saw everything connected up to the tuner. The antenna is nicely strain relieved. It's pulled up into the trees. I'm not sure how well you can see the wire. I can actually barely see it in person. But everything is connected up and ready to go. I'll have links in the description for all of the parts that I used on this. The next step is to go downstairs and hook up the radio and see how well this works. We're going to look at that in the next video. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Radio A to Z.